We'll call the regular meeting of the Upper County Commission to order. We'll begin with a moment of silent meditation and prayer followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Done. This time we'll have the reading of the minutes for the April 19, 2012 meeting. The County Commission of Ocean County, West Virginia, held their regular meeting at the Courthouse Annex on Thursday, April 19, 2012, at 9 a.m. Donnie County called the meeting to order. There were present Donnie County Commissioner, Creek Fletcher Commissioner, J.C. Rafferty Commissioner, William Parker Commissioner, I'm sorry, Administrator, <laughs> and Jacqueline Dane Walker Secretary. The meeting began with a moment of silent meditation and prayer, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. All motions passed unanimously unless otherwise stated. After reading of the minutes on motion by Creek Fletcher, seconded by J.C. Rafferty, the Commission approved the regular meeting minutes of April 12, 2012, with typographical corrections. After reading of the minutes um, on motion okay, by J.C. Rafferty, seconded by Creed Fletcher, the Commission approved the special meeting minutes of April 17, 2012, with typographical corrections. Rebecca Poe, retiring executive director, Country Roads Transit, appeared before the commission and introduced her successor, Laura Ward. Ms. Poe thanked the commission for their support and good working relationship with her agency. Rick Edwards, Buchanan Upshur Parks and Recreation Advisory Board representative, appeared before the commission and requested approval for a pool bus run. Cancy, uh, country, I'm sorry, I can't read this morning. <laughs> country Roads Transit will provide free transportation to the pool facility from designated locations for Upshur County students with approved identification. Children under the age of 12 will not be allowed to ride without adult <coughs> supervision. The fee for adult riders is $1.50. After discussion on motion by Creed Pletcher, seconded by J.C. Rafferty, the Commission approved the request. <coughs> Virgil Miller, Upshur County <coughs> Sheriff, reviewed the National Take Back Initiative, a Drug <coughs> Enforcement Administration sponsored program, encouraging responsible disposal, disposal of expired and or unused prescription drugs. <coughs> Sheriff Miller requested the use of the lobby of the courthouse annex from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Saturday, April 28, 2012, as a collection site. Tri-County Health Clinic in Rock Cave will be an additional drop-off site from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. After discussion on motion by Creed Pletcher, seconded by <coughs> J.C. Rafferty, the Commission approved the request. Sheriff Miller discussed civil service testing for applicants for deputy positions in the expansion of, of the advertising area to include locations outside of Upshur County due to the low number of respondents. Sheriff Miller made a recommendation to the commission to approve Michael Kurt, West Virginia Wesleyan College intern and criminal justice major, to be approved as reserve deputy for the Upshur County Sheriff's Office, stating that as an intern, Michael Pert has been an asset to the Sheriff's Office. After discussion on motion by J.C. Rafferty, seconded by Creed Pledger, the Commission approved Michael Pert as Reserve Deputy, effective April 19, 2012. Agenda item, employment of early voting clerks was deferred to later in the meeting. After discussion on motion by Creed Pledger, seconded by J.C. Rafferty, the Commission approved the employment of Ricky L. Cartwright as temporary seasonal maintenance personnel. Effective date of employment is April 15, 2012, at the rate of $8 per hour. After discussion on motion by J.C. Rafferty, seconded by Creed Fletcher, the Commission approved the rec resignation of Tracy Lewis's part-time E911 dispatcher, effective March 28, 2012. 
the Commission review documentation concerning the proposed RV dump station at the James W. Curry Park facility. After discussion, William Parker was requested to follow up with Bryson Van Nostrum, Van Nostrum Architects. The Commission reviewed the following for you information items. Number one, the NACO prescription drug discount card program. Number two, the Upshire County Sheriff's Financial Statement, March 2012. Number three, the General County Fund financial information is listed. Number four, Feline Activity Report, March 2012. Number five, Agendas and Notice of Meetings as listed. Number six, Meeting Minutes and or Financial Reports as listed. Number seven, Board Meetings as listed. Number eight, Appointments Needed or Upcoming as listed. The Commission approved all invoices for payment. The Commission approved all vacation orders. The Commission approved the following settlements as listed. The Commission approved the following exonerations and refunds as listed. The Commission approved the following requests to attend meetings as listed. The Commission approved the following consolidation of land tracts as listed. The Commission made a site visit to the old jail facility to make an assessment on storage space availability. The Commission recessed at 11.45 a.m. The Commission reconvened at 1 p.m. The Commission reviewed applicants for the James W. Curry Scholarship. No action was taken pending further discussion. William Parker reviewed a road name request from Addressing and Mapping Coordinator Terry Jo Bennett for Car Taylor Road. After discussion on motion by J.C. Rafferty, seconded by Creed Fletcher, the Commission approved the road name as requested. The Commission previously approved to waive fees associated with the road name change of CR 4 over 10, currently the John Carr Road, pending fulfillment of all other requirements set forth in the Upshire County 911 Address and Mapping Ordinance. The petitioner will follow up with necessary paperwork and report back at a future meeting. After discussion on motion by J.C. Rafferty, seconded by Creed Fletcher, the Commission approved the employment of Beatrice Adams, Irene Andrew, Nelda Light, Tana Wentz, Judith Miles, Catherine Fry, Beulah Riffle, Jane Redcliffe, Penny Heyman, <coughs> Margaret Neely, Philip Murray, Patsy Burgess, Phyllis Thacker, Beverly Rieger, D. Jane White and Kimberly Walls as temporary early voting clerks. If additional personnel are required, names will be submitted to the Commission for approval. The effective date of employment is April 25, 2012 through May 5, 2012 at $7.25 per hour. Virgil Miller, Upshire County Sheriff, appeared before the Commission to discuss staffing levels. Steve Linger, E911 Communications Center Director, appeared before the Commission to discuss staffing levels. With no further business, on motion by J.C. Rafferty, seconded by Donnie Tenney, the Commission meeting adjourned at 3.30 p.m. Okay, other than reversing Willie's demotion to Commissioner and promoting him <laughs> back to County Administrator, <coughs> do we have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. So. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Okay, we have a proclamation. Mental Health Month, Christine Carroll, Executive Director of the Hall House. So, you get the podium. My name is Rebecca Stevens. I am the Hall House, uh, what am I? Um, house Manager, sorry. This is just, wow. Mental Health Month 2012, do more for one in four. Live well, it's essential to your potential. Whereas mental health is essential to everyone's overall health and well-being, and whereas all Americans experience times of difficulty and stress in their lives, and whereas prevention is an effective way to reduce the burden of mental health conditions, and whereas there is a strong body of research that supports specific tools that all Americans can use to better handle challenges and protect their health and well-being, and whereas mental health conditions are real and prevalent in our nation, and whereas with effective treatment, those individuals with mental health conditions can recover and lead full, productive lives, 
and whereas each business, school, government agency, healthcare provider, organization, and citizen <coughs> shares the burden of mental health problems and has a responsibility to promote mental wellness and support prevention efforts. Now, therefore, be it resolved that we, the Upshur County Commission, do hereby proclaim May 2012 as Mental Health Month in Upshur County, West Virginia, and encourage the citizens, government agencies, public and private institutions, business, businesses and schools in Upshur County to recommit our committee, community to increasing awareness and understanding of mental health, the steps our citizens can take to protect their mental health, and the need for appropriate and accessible services for all people with mental health conditions. Do we have a motion to approve the proclamation as presented? I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor say aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Would you all like to come up here, or everyone that's with her, come up behind us and get a picture? <laughs> Well, we, we have a copy of the sign or anything. This morning. Are you doing? You got to turn my chair around. Right That's a nice little school chair. Jason, I'll get out there. Bunch of, bunch of. You are the managing director. Bunch of. I'm the house manager. House manager. Joyce. Christine. Get close to her. I know you're the, you're the ramrod. Here's your device. Oh, here you go. You're the, you're the ramrod. Yes. 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 We usually have to keep him alive. Bunch in there, Joyce. Bunch in there. Squeeze in there, Joyce. The woman beside of JK, we cannot see. Step up here, right? There you go. Step up here and stand up. You guys can move forward a little bit. Looks like you're Step into the light. Should we be? Yeah. Right, Felicia? Like a presidential press conference. It was like that. <laughs> no. Wasn't that what set off the Incredible Hulk? Was that, uh, That's right. Those flashlights. Well, thank you. All. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for your yeah. interest. Thank you, thank, you. thank you for your service to the community. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay, we're going to we ask them to talk a little bit about uh, what they're doing, some of their events, how many they're serving, and that. So, uh, if you want to go ahead and okay. do a little publicity there. Introduce yourself first to the public. Uh, my name is Christine Carroll, and I'm the director of the Hall House. And uh, what we do is we are a resource center that. Uh, People can come and we're open 9 to 3, uh, Monday through Friday, and they come and in the morning we have donuts and, and coffee and um, lunch. we have lunch Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from um, 
12 to normally 1 o'clock. And we, uh, we do a list of activities and we have theme month. Uh, the month of April was anxiety month. So we did all of our activities based on the anxiety and we give the community tools to, have, um, tools to work with anxiety. And I was thinking about lunch. Uh, together with the parish house, we serve about 250 people. Is oh, that wow. about it? A week. And when we started this project about a year ago, we were serving between two to three people a day. And now it's, it's, um, it's, about, it's about up to 40. It was Chrissy and me and a can of soup. soup yeah. And now it's like we were saying, we have chickens, we've got all sorts of stuff. And we have um, great donors. People uh, donate their services, and Chapel Hill donates food. So wherever we go, we're getting great support from the community. It really is a cool thing. And where's the, the location? What's the location of the home? 66 College Avenue. It's right next to the parish house. Um, yeah. And you have a sign out there that says... Uh, um, we do not. Um, in fact, we just did some voting with the community. We had a, a selection of a red sign or a green sign. And yesterday, <coughs> voting closed and the green sign won. So the sign guy is actually printing it for us today, and we're hoping to have it up by the, uh, Monday. Well, with anxiety being your monthly focus right now, green would be a more passive color. Correct. That's probably why it was voted that way. They're going green. And They're I was thinking green. one more thing. I think it's important to remember that it's peer run, so everything's very uh, democratic. Um, and we're there to help people with their wellness and recovery, and we are also uh, in recovery. Okay, yeah. very good. A very good addition to the community. Thank, Thank you very much, all Thank of you are involved and help with that. And even though it's Democratic, I said there's probably some Republicans too, right? <laughs> <laughs> I know that's what J.K.'s a Republican. <laughs> well, thank you very much. <clears throat> okay, our next appointment. Virgil, are you here, are you here on behalf of John Bears? Or? Yeah, we look a lot like him. <laughs> yeah, you do. Especially when you're standing up. I'm only half the man John is. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, we have about five minutes for Virgil. Maybe maybe John will show up. He's we'll going to be rescheduling. Oh, okay, he's going to be rescheduling. Okay. Okay, <coughs> during, during the five minutes, then we'll... Okay, <clears throat> first item uh, is uh, approval of volunteer for Lewis Upshur Animal Control Facility of Carla Lee Bass. Does that recommendation come from Jan or with yes. her blessing? Yes. Her blessing? Is she also a Wesleyan affiliate? No. no. Well, that's good. We have a motion to approve the request for a volunteer. Is there a move? I'll second it. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Next item is approve advancement of Lacey M. Lamb, E911 dispatcher from training status, as recommended by Steve Stephen Linger, 911 director, effective as of April the 22nd, 2012. I'll make that motion. Second. Second. And it's always good that we have those that are moving up in our comm center. So all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. <coughs> motion carried. And today we will continue our reviewing the applications for the James Curry Scholarship. Uh, we have uh, correspondence from the Division of Justice and Community Service concerning receipt of Community Corrections Grant application for $298,852. So they've acknowledged that they received the grant application. Uh, So hopefully that will be funded as requested. We have correspondence to the City of Buckhannon from Upshur County Office of Emergency Management concerning emergency operations plan for the city. Uh, <coughs> so this is um, a request from uh, Office of Emergency Management for the city's participation in um, the plan. And we have our agendas and meetings, notices. 
and uh, I will say one thing the uh, I have had the neighbors of the building that we've been talking about that's been going on for three years with the city that's becoming dilapidated across from the uh, academy school and uh, <clears throat> neighbors are concerned that that something they're hopeful that something will be done and as a matter of fact the one lady that lives right in front of us said she was mowing her lawn a couple of days ago and had to pick up additional pieces of glass and brick that fell off the building into her lawn area where she had to mow and hoped that it didn't go away after the election um, I wanted to keep it on the forefront so that uh, uh, and suggested that we monitor the <clears throat> plan of action uh, of Mr. Tenney getting his uh, license back and making sure that uh, I believe the date of that school in Morgantown was first week in May first week in May which would be next week yeah. sometime so we'll monitor that and make sure that he gets his um, license so that that process will be ongoing and hopefully can be taken care of then it's been a long process so <clears throat> This point, uh, if we could find their sheriff, he's out. Why don't you see it? Put an APB out on him, Dennis. Okay. <coughs> and what does APB stand for? All, All points, points bullet. Oh, very good. Yeah. Yeah. You watched your dragon out of the seat. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Webb. What's that his name? Jack. Jack Webb. First reality TV program. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, sir. Come and get you. Good morning. I'm out in the hall having a meeting. You all <laughs> I know, Virgil. Uh, I thought you anyway, have, we you have can. a meeting of the minds. We have a meeting because nobody else minds. You've got a minute. You've got a minute to talk about something other than what you came up for. Well, good. It's what I, Joyce and I were just talking about. Very good. Well, I need permission to put the national take back banner up on front of the annex for Saturday morning. <laughs> it's coming Saturday. <laughs> yeah. I make that motion. Do we have that request? You. You. Uh, approved last week the uh, use of the annex for the national take back initiative okay. now well, we're asking permission to get the maintenance or somebody to put it up in front oh, of the uh, so you have annex. approval now you just need some help right because rotary beat me to main street so. oh they did yeah well as part of the request we approved last week then what we will do we'll contact the maintenance and ask them if they would when would you like that put up today tomorrow tomorrow Okay, so as part of that request, that'll that'll be part of it, and we'll, we'll make an amendment, that an, 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 an amendment to the request, of, yeah. making an ex post facto. <coughs> no, actually, uh, since we approved it last week, <laughs> then then this is just part of the approval last week. And, That'll work. That works for me. Yeah. But uh, so, Joyce came up actually with the idea yeah. since we couldn't put it up on Main Street. Right. To well, we put it on the, the use of that, and that the use of it is all. Well, that way, I think it'd be easier for people to to find it. Right, yeah, right there. Exactly. Right. Okay, now it's time, Virgil. So you go right ahead. Review staffing. Review staffing. Uh, I wanted to touch on when was it? In February, I, I came to you and we talked about the approval of Jason Queen, who was first on the civil service list to uh, uh, begin employment. Uh, without delving into too much of the issue, at that time, Jason wasn't. Uh, there were some issues he needed to resolve. He had some personal issues that he had to resolve, and uh, he deferred the employment at that time. And that's why I come this morning and ask now. Uh, he uh, just came to me, and those are issues are resolved, and that he had those personal issues, and they were family issues, and I don't want to get into them. But uh, now I ask, uh, as I informed you before, he was number one on the civil service list. And that uh, prior sir, uh, police officer, he is certified by the professional standards. And uh, we wanted to ask, uh, as co-employers, to uh, to uh, go ahead and approve the hiring of Jason Queen to fill that uh, open position we have. Well, the only thing we talked about uh, previously was the uh, the funding aspect of it. Um, mm -hmm. The funding's there until the first of July in this fiscal Correct. year. Right. Willie, did you run the numbers on what we'd be looking at uh, from July to 
the next year. After the after next fiscal year. Next fiscal year. Yeah. yeah. Of course it'll be funding for one position. Right. Which is approximately thirty two thousand dollars. Total is about fifty six thousand, yeah. I think. When you throw when you add the insurance and related mm -hmm. cost in. And we didn't include that in the original budget uh, in, in March, uh, not knowing some other factors that are involved and how that would you know, translate. But uh, in discussion with the sheriff this week, he advised that you know, <clears throat> those factors being you know, set aside or under consideration or uh, the planned retirement at the end of the year of another individual will open up you know, uh, slots if, if need be or additional slots which will transfer funding but that will involve uh, a certified deputy taking care of process service and, and bailiff and, and those functions that are currently provided by that individual so well the other thing too <coughs> we didn't we didn't include in the in the, the new budget the the retirement uh, offsetting the retirement like Buddy Brady, is that correct? That's what we're talking about. That's what I'm saying. I yeah. Mean, so yeah. This is we didn't include that replacement cost in in that. I, no, we did not I think it. I had it in the original budget request, but yeah, we uh, yeah, we backed it out as the right. commission. When I say we, I backed it out in the plan presented to the commission because of the election involved and some other factors involved with that. Whether how that would play out, right? Uh, and. Uh, you know, with the other, there's a grant that's currently uh, right. under consideration that may uh, uh, open up another additional slot, but uh, we won't know about that for a while. That's the middle school Probably PRO general. officer. Right. Right. And, and then with this retirement, uh, the only thing about this retirement is that, you know, a certified officer then would need to take care of other functions that this gentleman would normally takes care of. That would just basically, uh, there would be a certified officer that would be <clears throat> performing the process. Well, your certified officers, your, your officers do that anyway. <coughs> Pardon? Yeah. Uh, your certified officers do that anyway. Right, that's what I'm saying. That would be the that would be the, the main difference, which would allow them to do other things also. Then mm -hmm. he also serves as bailiff in the court. How does that? You'd have an officer taking care of that, or is your plan to have reserve officers or someone else handle that temporarily? Or well, you all kind of trade off on yeah. that now anyway, yeah, yeah. don't you? Yeah, when we get loaded. Yeah. Just like yesterday, I took circuit court, and Mike Kelly took family court, and Mark Davis, we just switch off. What's the requirements in order to bailiff for those courts? You have to be a certified law? Well, no, because some counties use, uh, you know, other officers. Court, they're calling them court security officers now. That seems to be the trend. Mm -hmm. uh, and the qualifications aren't quite as high as the... Randolph County, matter of fact, 1st July, I think they're hiring a... a uh, they're looking for an individual as just as a court security officer who will work under the sheriff's office super, supervision and bond and so forth, but uh, be a court security officer. Or they uh, carry firearms, I presume, the certified officers mm -hmm. do. Yeah. But, uh, yeah typically. <coughs> training through the West Virginia Supreme Court uh, for certified court officers yeah. bailiff which we we send rich yeah. annually every year up to morgantown for that it's a week-long 40-hour mm -hmm. class spring court puts on marshal service i think they participate and mm -hmm. some other agencies now you know if uh, you know you gentlemen approve between now and whenever uh, the employment and then there is a retirement at that point you could also you know, depending on staffing levels, it may be appropriate to hire a court security offer or bailiff, or it may be appropriate to stay with, you know, a certified officer. But that I would open that option up to take a look. That option may be available, right. you know, depending on other factors you know, that transpire. One thing I thought, and I tried to get it several years ago, it was you you may recall talked about with Lewis County and Upshur County, since we're in the same judicial circuit of jointly. Hiring an officer and would just travel with the circuit judge, which I thought was a good idea, but you know, it never, never yeah. flew. <clears throat> okay, any other questions or comments on the request of the sheriff? Uh, considering everything, it, it looks like that, um, that it's an acceptable request. Do we have a motion to approve the sheriff's request? 
I make that motion. Second. I get a little nervous there for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Add to the excitement. Yeah. All in favor say aye. All right. Motion same sign. Motion carry. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank and you, uh, I understand, Darlene, you're on the, the list to take the next test. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Get him up for the race. All right. Thank you. Take okay. care. Okay, our next scheduled appointment is 11 o'clock with James Bryson Van Ostrand concerning the James W. Curry Campground. And then at 115, we have the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board. Staffing levels. So, anything else we have to talk about until then? You gentlemen have anything? Willie, do you have anything? Uh, we do have an opening on the uh, Upshur County uh, Convention Visitors Bureau. Uh, it needs to be an individual connected with tourism. Uh, we had a resignation uh, from uh, somebody that had served for a couple years and uh, so if there's, if you gentlemen know of somebody or if there's somebody out there that would be interested that's connected with tourism, if they could let the office of the Upshur County Commission know that for consideration. Okay. And that's for the remainder term? The remainder of the terms in May of 2013. So May of 2013. About a year then? Yes. Okay. Okay. So anyone that's involved with tourism that would like to serve on the uh, CBB? Uh, Contact the Upshur County Commission office. We'll give you a job. Maybe Amanda and, and uh, John can put that in the newspaper and right. you get some outreach. Request in there. <clears throat> okay, well, we will go ahead and get started on our paperwork. We're waiting for 11 o'clock. We have about 20 minutes, so we can get a lot of work done, gentlemen.